Hey guys, Broken Profit here. Welcome back to the channel. And if I'm talking low, it is because it is 1.30 in the morning. Hoodoo standard time. I've been doing a lot of workings all day. I just got out of the shower. Short video because I haven't had time to lotion yet and I don't want to lock up like a dead bug from dry skin talking to you guys. But while I was in the shower, <clears throat> Spirit hit me and said, you need to just get in front of the camera and press record. I didn't even intend on doing a video. But again, it said press record. And I figured out why. I have been getting a lot of people texting the text line or emailing me saying that they've been hexed or they feel like they've been hexed or cursed. And I'll be honest with you guys, despite what those other readers or workers tell you, nine out of 10 of you have not been hexed or cursed. You are unfortunately dealing with the consequences of your choices. But that's something people don't want to talk about. But there's always that one out of 10 that actually has something going on with them. And that is who I'm doing the video for. That those of you with an ear to listen let you hear. Okay. I first want you to understand what a hex or a curse is. It is like a spiritual virus. It is something that someone birthed and they infected infected you with it with hopes of the spiritual virus um, like any virus causing symptoms and the symptoms of a hex that you have been infected with will be loss of money loss of health sometimes loss of life um, loss of loved ones people around you things like that these are symptoms that I call like the end stage of a hex when it is like fully bloomed like a dark rose and there it is just playing out in your life what I want to do with this video is show you some of the early signs of a true hex or curse so that you aren't thinking oh well I've got to run a bad luck bad luck happens guys I know now that we have become awakened to spirituality we start wanting to attribute regular everyday things to spiritual causes when in reality no like i said it's the consequences of our own choices or actions or just life being life now that you are a hoodoo worker or balero or you started practicing orisha worship or things like that does not mean that life is not going to happen <clears throat> So I wrote down a list of things and we're going to go over them, but we're not just going to go over the symptoms. We're going to go over some things that you can do about it to cut it off. <clears throat> kind of like this cold that I have and I'm drinking my mullein leaf tea to stop it from getting worse. So let's get into the video. Number one, number one, and it is often the first symptom that you are being worked on is a feeling of dread. Now, guys, mental health is real. So if you are constantly paranoid and you've always been paranoid, you might need to talk to someone. But if this is something that just popped up out of nowhere, you don't have a, a reason for it, then this can be a symptom that someone is working on you. The feeling of dread is often caused by just pure hatred from another individual. I know we live in a world where everyone is like, man, bump my haters, and bump, bump. But people disliking you can have serious consequences. I'm in a public uh, forum. A lot of people don't like my opinions on hoodoo because I'm actually a black man down in the South and been doing this for a while. And I'm telling them that sticking that rose quartz egg up your mm -mm, ain't hoodoo. People don't like that, so they think they don't like me. But they really don't because I'm lovable <laughs> but you know stuff will come my way I have my protections up every so often if I lose focus something to slip through case in point I live out in the middle of nowhere okay <laughs> like seriously in the middle of nowhere and I love it here most times <laughs> practically all the time I do not close my windows or blinds well, the blinds, the windows stay closed. But I don't close the blinds at night because who's going to look through my windows? Bambi? A raccoon? A possum? That's about it. There's, there's no neighbors anywhere. Okay? Um, but 
within the last few days, I found myself walking past a window at night. And you know, you can't see out there. It's dark outside. And I'm looking. Or I'm closing the blind. I haven't done that since I lived in Southwest Atlanta. <laughs> so, I'm like, huh, okay. Somebody trying something. So, did my cleansing. Fine. Make sure my protections were in place. So, if it is something like that that comes up for no reason, out of nowhere, do your divination. Because chances are that someone is like really hating on you and you could probably trace it back to whom and you know whatever <laughs> wow that was weird i'm back see my battery died in my camera out of nowhere and it was showing full full charge and i know i hadn't recorded a lot for that battery to be dead like that but you know it's not on me it's because something doesn't want you guys getting this information but as I was saying, that's why I tell people it just pays to be a decent person because all that negative energy coming at you, people can know nothing about hoodoo, voodoo, anything, but just enough negative thoughts coming your way can affect you. Case in point, I mean, look at the person at work that nobody likes. Bad stuff is always happening to them. Car messing up. Just it's always happening to them because y'all sitting there hating on this person all the time. And so it just just be good. You know, be kind to yourselves and to each other. Alright? Now, one way that you can counteract this type of working, that is a pure hatred working, is through regular cleansings. You can do a, a very big cleansing yourself or go to a spiritual worker that you trust to do it on your behalf and it will take that away okay these type of um, hexes curses are generally not that hard to get rid of okay so there that's that's number one number two is something that a lot of people miss that's why they get to the end stages where it's affecting their money and their life stuff like that and it is digestion issues I have seen this happen a lot. I have I've experienced it <clears throat> where your digestion just out of nowhere goes all cattywampus. It will either flow too fast, <laughs> which we know what that does, or it goes too slow and it's like you eat two bites of something and you're bloated. Remember we talked about how a hex or a curse is a living thing living thing it's almost like a created spirit y'all know i have pet snakes <clears throat> the goal of a virus or a snake like a snake will grab its prey and wrap around it when it's wrapping it is squeezing when it's squeezing it is shutting off that prey items systems the heart is stopping the lungs can expand the circulation slows down it is effectively weakening that that prey item enough so that it dies and can be ingested a hex or a curse does the same thing it tries to weaken you and weaken you so that it can get you to that end stage those systems that that person who infected you with this hex or curse wants to see happen in your life they want to see you broke they want to see you lonely they want to see you upset so they try to weaken you to get to those end stages Digestion is one of those things that often gets affected early on because when you can't eat, you get cranky. Um, your focus goes out, you know, goes out. It, it, you know what I'm trying to say. Shoot, <clears throat> you start messing up at work, and then it starts to slow, starts to snowball because we love to eat. So your digestion will often get messed up, and a lot of ways that your digestion starts to mess up is if someone fed you something or you came into physical contact with it. remember my my um my oil video so somebody probably touched you you walked over something you came in contact with it or somebody fed you something fellas i told y'all don't be eating that spaghetti that lasagna that red sauce will get you every time okay now one of the main ways that you can get rid of 
a hex or a curse introduced into you that way is some white willow bark tea. Works wonders. You can eat um, a rattlesnake root, fresh rattlesnake root. Or you can take a glass of water, sit it on top of your Bible at the 91st Psalm, Psalm 91. Let it sit for one hour and then drink it. You'll be surprised if all the bloating and stuff don't go away. Now, we're talking about spiritual means. I'm not trying to diagnose anybody who may have some actual physical things going on. This is just the spiritual aspect of that particular spiritual hexing curse manifestation. Okay, number three and number four kind of go hand in hand because they're caused by the same thing. Okay, number three is sleep disruption. And no, I'm not talking about waking up at 3... <coughs> excuse me, at 3 a.m. Y'all always tell oh, I've been waking up at 3 in the morning. Listen, guys. When they started making those movies like The Conjuring and all those other movies, everybody's waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Whenever they make a demonic possession video, they start talking about some... So you've been programmed to just start waking up that way. <laughs> that is not what I'm talking about. I mean, when you can't go to sleep, all of a sudden. Remember, these things are things that come on all of a sudden. Not something that's been happening on and off throughout your life. Something that's going on all of a sudden. Um, you either sleeping too much or not sleeping enough. Okay? These are two ways that, that your sleep is disrupted. And what we're talking about is something that is meant to impact your life negatively. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're sleeping too much, you're missing out on life. You're missing appointments. You're missing dates. You're missing family and, uh, gatherings and stuff like that. It's disrupting your life. If you're not sleeping a little or you're not sleeping enough, you're making it to these things, but you're not effective. You know, you're going to suck at work. You're going to suck at, um, you know, wherever you got to be because you're not going to be focused enough. Or maybe, maybe at the, at the end stages, it'll affect maybe when you're operating machinery or driving so yeah that is um one of the uh, that's a big symptom right there and this is often caused by candle work is often caused by candle work the reason that it works that way if someone is lighting a candle against you remember we talked about Hoodoo is meant to maintain the balance of life and the balance of things. So if someone's burning a candle on you, as their flame goes up, it kind of dims where you are. And what do we do when we sleep? We turn the lights off. We turn the lights down. Candle goes up. It's affecting when our lights go down. You see what I'm saying? So they're affecting your sleep that way. Um... And number four, the fourth symptom, because I told you they kind of piggyback, is just random flashes of light. Remember, we I'm not diagnosing anybody's physical things because we know there are certain physical ailments that can cause just random flashes of light. But oftentimes you'll see, and I'm not talking about shadow people, but just, you know, you things are too bright or they're too dim. And this, is, again, is something that happened all of a sudden. And if you're experiencing this, Get yourself checked out. This is just the spiritual aspect of it. And again, this is just your spiritual alarm system going off and it's honing in on the flickering light of that candle and you're seeing it manifest in your eyes. <clears throat> but these are two symptoms that are caused by someone burning a candle um, and praying for your demise. Someone is trying to hex you with a candle. Now, if your sleep is being disrupted, one thing that you can do is fight fire with fire. And that is lighting a candle that you have prayed over and having it next to your bed. Um, of course, put it in a bowl somewhere where it will be safe. But you want to pray over that candle and light it. They're trying to dim your light. You're bringing it back up. Okay. Um, another method that I like to employ myself is to bring my ancestors in, having someone to watch over me while I sleep, because sleep and death are cousins. And 
we're talking about that hex being a living thing like a virus and predators do not like to be watched they like to ambush and if you turn and you look at them they kind of freeze so you want to employ your ancestors to do a sleep vigil so what I will do is I will set a picture of my ancestors or I will just make sure the candles on my ancestor altar stay lit and tell them hey watch over me while I sleep strong enough ancestors will drive them back anyway if you do that or light a candle for three nights in a row most times that is enough to turn that hex away the last symptom is the feeling of random touches and a lot of times our spiritual guides our ancestors will touch us lightly but one thing that I tell people is that when they are doing it it's normally the same place all the time like if your grandmother used to always walk in while you were sleeping and lay her hand across your face because you were just so cute while you were asleep she's gonna do that still now you'll feel that um, but we're talking about just 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 random here's a trick guys a lot of times what you're feeling because we all have spiritual alarm system there's something in you that is trying to alert you that something is going on those random touches are because someone has made a doll out of you and they're working that doll and what you're feeling is them holding the doll you're literally feeling spiritually their hands on that doll that they've made of you okay canceling doll work is so simple some of y'all gonna squirm at this but it's really simple when someone makes a doll out of you they have gotten something of yours a fingernail clipping a hair one of one of your million pictures that you put on insta scam and they done printed it out <laughs> <clears throat> maybe some dirt from your foot track whatever but they have a part of you in that doll so in order to cancel that work all you've got to do is get that part back just pluck one of your own hairs bake it into a cookie pray over it and eat it you've taken that that piece of your spirit back and put it back where it belongs easy easy peasy it is done Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry, I thought I heard somebody walking around. But anyway, um, that's it. Thank y'all so much for watching this uh, video for me. If you got any value from it, go ahead and uh, give me that thumbs up. <laughs> and run them donations. If I get 100, 150 thumbs up on this video within the next, what, day or two, you know what I'll do? I will publish a link. We'll have a free public intro to hoodoo class over zoom or should i do a live here y'all let me know in the comment section all right and um man y'all have been amazing i appreciate each and every one of you i'm about to put some lotion on let hoodoo dog out then take my tail to bed it is two o'clock now <laughs> so you guys are well appreciated thank you to each and every one of you and um i'll see you soon profit out and furthermore, there is no hex, spell, or curse out there that cannot be countered. So take heart. No matter how bad you feel like your situation is, it can be brought back to get better. Okay? Do not give up. Stay in the fight. And especially if you catch it soon enough. Like any other illness, even a, a spiritual one, you catch it soon enough, it can be turned around and get you back to right that much faster. All right. Don't just keep writing this stuff down. Y'all need to do this stuff. And I forgot to mention uh, two more workings. When it comes to a negative candle, if you walk, start at your, your front door, walk backwards for nine steps, put up two fingers, and turn around 360 degrees blowing. As you turn, it'll extinguish those candles. And for the first one, the feeling of dread, put those devil pods over your doors. Put the devil pods over your doors 
as a protection and it'll turn that back around. That person who has nothing but time to sit and hate on you because that's why that, that number one is so effective because people who don't like you, they have nothing but time to not like you. I tell people with YouTube channels, don't silence your haters. Your haters will get in your comment section and talk about you all day and blow your algorithm up. The people who love you may not say nothing. It speaks about society, right? But that's it for real this time, y'all. <laughs> y'all get y'all some sleep too. Bye.